Welcome back to Gears and Tech. Thank you so much for joining us today. We've got something great in store for you today where we're going to show you a real hack way to change the bolt pattern on a axle, really, I guess. I don't know if there's a better way to explain that. So let me get you caught up to speed here. You may have already seen the engine broke on it. And so we started to do an electric conversion. You can see we're missing the whole rear end of this Jeep because we're doing that electric conversion. If you haven't seen the other episodes, go ahead and check the link in the description to the playlist that shows you all the work that we're doing on this Jeep. We're taking you along for the journey. But now we are at the point where it's time to start test fitting stuff on our axle. This is our electric conversion rear axle. It is a two speed axle. It comes as a complete kit with the axle and the motor and the controller and everything. We're gonna wanna bolt it into this carriage so that we can put it back in there. But first I encountered a little problem. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about. These are the wheels that were on the Jeep. The bolt pattern on these wheels, I thought, was four by 100. So the axle that I ordered, if I come over here, has a bolt pattern of four by 100. Now I have two problems right now. Number one, these studs are way too fat for those wheels. They don't fit. So I thought, no big deal. I'll just drill the holes out in those wheels and then they'll fit back on here just fine. So that was problem number one. Problem number two was, it turns out, that these are four by 100 as expected, but these are four by 110. Now four by 110 is a standard UTV rim bolt pattern, which makes sense because this is a UTV. So of course it should be four by 110, but of course I didn't know that. So if we look at the old axle, that's this guy right here, the studs are so much smaller, as you can see there, and they're in a four by 110 configuration. So the easy thing to do would be to get a four by 100 to four by 110 spacer, which I looked at doing and they were expensive and hard to find and they were two inch spacers. Now I already ordered this axle to be a little bit wider so that the wheels will be pushed out a bit on here as it is. I don't think I have four total inches that I can have these tires fit out and look good. So I needed a different method. Today, we are going to modify these to be 4x110 axles. Now to do that, we're gonna use a couple tools. First off, I'm gonna use some of these. Now these are bolt hole patterns. I don't even know. They're bolt circle templates is what they are. So if you wanted to make your own bolt circle, you just put this on your hub, you mark your holes, and you do your holes. Lucky enough on this kit, it has the four by 100 bolt holes, as well as the four by 110 bolt holes, all on the same pattern. So let me show you something. If we bring this over to here, I can go like this and put the four by 100 on there, just like that. And now I know exactly where the four by 110s will go. So I can mark my holes and make new holes in this axle so that it has the four by one 10 bolt pattern. Now, before I went ahead with this idea, I did check in the back here and there's adequate reinforcement all the way around. These studs are just press in. So we're gonna get my big hammer and pound them out after we've marked the holes. So the first thing we're gonna do is mark our holes. So let's stick this back on there like that. Now I wanna make sure that this is as straight as possible. The center hub is actually exactly the size of the center of this. So I go like that, and I go like that. I'm just using a pencil because it marks things the best. 110, like that. There we go. So now you can see, hopefully you can see, my pencil marks there. There's a pencil mark right there of my four by 110 bolt pattern I'm gonna do on this because I use, now you could measure this out yourself, right? But this is self-aligning. 
So when I stick this on like this, it centers off of the bore, the center hub, and then I get them ideally perfectly aligned there so I don't have balancing issues. So now that that's been marked, I can pop these studs out and get ready to drill my holes. So I'm gonna do that next. Now these studs were a little longer than I thought. So next problem, you can see they hit the, the brake rotor without coming out. So I'm gonna have to loosen this stud bolt, which I can use my fingers because I'm so strong. I'll pop this off. This hub should now remove and hopefully I don't lose a bunch of oil in here. In fact, I'm gonna lift this up higher. I believe that this is ready to go. So if I go like this, like that, if there is any oil in here, it's gonna run downhill that way so that no oil comes running out of here. I should be able to just hit this with my impact and pull this hub right off. So I'm gonna do that right now, actually. Now you can see this just got a heck of a lot more complicated. So it turns out, if I looked at this closer, I would have known this. The shaft is actually sealed right here. So nothing's gonna run out here. This is just sitting on a keyed shaft, this entire assembly. I need to get it off. It's on pretty tight. So I've got my puller set up. I've just kept the nut here because my puller doesn't have the little centering pin on it. So this will just keep it centered. And all I want to do is just loosen this guy off to pop this entire hub off of here. As you can see, that was so easy. So I can loosen this off now, put that there so I don't lose all those pieces. And then the whole hub assembly comes off. Now I can get to the nuts that hold the brake rotor on. You can see this is all still sealed. Don't lose that key in there. And it's gonna be easy to do. So the nice thing is this is now a serviceable part. So I probably could have just bought a whole new hub if I wanted to which is also good news because if I screw this up, I can buy a new hub, which is way cheaper than buying a whole new axle assembly. So positive, positive news. Now I got to find the right Allen head for this to pull that guy off. So here we got this. It is a metric, what size is that? Five millimeter. And surprisingly, these are not actually nearly as tight as I would have thought they should be, but it's okay. They do look like they have some thread locker on them at least. So they shouldn't have come loose, but I'm gonna make sure to torque those down a heck of a lot tighter. This brake rotor is gonna be mild steel. So it's not like I have to worry about cracking it or anything, but very surprising how easily these are popping out. There we go. Now we can take that guy off, put that down right there. And this is our first glimpse at the backside. So you can see these just pop right out. Just like that. So these are typical knurled stud bolts, which is fine, no issues there. And this is, uh, it's like a cast aluminum. It's actually very soft. So it's gonna be very easy to drill through, which is positive. And I actually did a test hole here just to check it, which was far away from where my bolt holes are. So the next thing I've got to do is find the center of each of my stud holes so that I don't screw this up. I do not want to screw this up. So now that I've got my whole centers all marked, I've got a drill bit set. I'm not gonna use the right drill bit for the final hole, but I will show you what I have. So I've got a couple things here to help me make this as perfect as possible. You don't wanna, like you wanna make sure that they're in the right pattern, but they also need to be perfectly square to that hub. If they're not, then the bolts will end up off at a weird angle. They'll never fit on the tire. It's just not gonna work for you. So I've got the proper size drill bit and a tap so that I can tap these holes out because my new studs are actually threaded studs, which I'll show you later. But I also have this drill block, which I'll be able to hopefully line up on here, clamp to this so that it forces me to drill my hole straight. So before I go too far, I'm gonna open that up and I'm gonna double check that my drill bit is the right size for my threaded hole. And it looks like it is. So I'm using, this is M10 by 1.25 tap. And then I've got, this was a 8.8 .8 millimeter drill bit. So this is gonna be my final size. 
but I can use any of these drill bits to get close to the final size and then use that for the final size. So I'm gonna do a, quite a few holes here. I'll do one pilot hole, make sure it's lined up properly. Then I'll do my bigger hole and then my final hole before I tap it. So I'll give you guys a close up of my drill block set up. I've used these clamps to hold it in place. This will allow me to drill straight and true to my circle. Excellent. And then we check that that lined up center on our hole. Hopefully it did. Let's find out. Oh yeah. Perfect. So now we're ready to do the actual hole. So this one is closest to a 3 8 inch, but it's not exactly, but it'll at least keep me honest enough. There we go. Now what we should have here is a perfectly straight hole. It's as close to straight as you're gonna get. Now this hopefully doesn't fit in there. It doesn't. So now I get my tapping set and see if this thing will go in there. Now taps work best with some lubricant. So I'm going to use some power steering fluid and that'll be good enough. You just need something, some sort of lubricant. It doesn't need to be, I mean, you can get special tapping fluid, but this will work just fine as well. So now what I'm going to do is go grab the studs off of the other one and thread it through from the back and just make sure it fits how I think it should. And then I'll continue doing the rest. So I'm going to check that next. First of all, I got to say welcome back. Second of all, I realized that about halfway through recording, my audio here stopped recording anything. So you would have noticed a change in quality because we would have to use my GoPro audio, which hopefully worked. Otherwise, you've just watched a silent film with me narrating over top what I was doing. But I've got the stud from the other axle and all we're going to do is see if this threads in. Let me come up here and we're going to try. So this just threads in from the back. And if I did this right, and if I checked everything right, this will just thread right in here. Just like that. And the thought is that this will tighten up. Did I bring my wrench? I did. So I can tighten this down with my wrench. Like that. And now we have our first stud. You can see if I look at that, that's about as straight as I could ever hope to make it. It does look like it might be a little bit off, but that's it. So I've got another hole here to do, a hole here and a hole here. So I'm gonna repeat what I just did to make this one three more times you don't need to watch me do it and then i'll come back and show you what this looks like with all of them on and hopefully with a wheel that can bolt onto it now this is our finished hub you can see they're all bolted through we've got them all kind of on here they're about as square as you're going to get them you can see the other bolt holes here kind of offset from where we put our new holes now it's time to see how well it fits inside our rim. So we're gonna flip this guy over like that. I'm gonna take our hub and hopefully it just slips right in. Like that. And if we flip that over and have a look, you can see our stud is poking right through. So now that, that hub, will fit right back on there and it will hold this wheel on there. Now it is a little bit of a tight fit because try as you might, you're not gonna get this perfect. It'll never be perfect. So the backup plan, what if this didn't work out? The backup plan would be rather than to do a threaded hole, which these bolt into, would be to drill the threads out and then just have these loose. It would make it way harder to change the tires 
but that would allow them to float and kind of self align to your rim. Since I did it as perfect as I could, that block worked out perfectly. The everything that you saw me use worked out great. The bolt pattern matches perfect. I will put links in the description to get that block, to get those templates, to get all of this stuff that I got here that you saw me use for this portion of this install. Now, I do have the other one to do over there. I'm not gonna do that on camera. I'm going to move on. So I'm going to finish this. I can put that back on. I'll take the other one off, do this whole process again. So in a future video, you're gonna see me mount this axle onto this frame, and then we're gonna put it into that space right up under there. So lots of progress is gonna be coming in future videos. I've gotta get this done for the season and I gotta get going. So I'm gonna keep going on this and you'll see the updates. I might be live streaming. You might've seen my live stream set up over here. So this one I wasn't live streaming, but normally I've got my computer set up, my follow me cam, all this stuff so that I can live stream in the garage. You guys can see me working away. So consider subscribing so you'll get notifications when I'm live streaming and then you can kind of watch behind the scenes while we film this. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video. and We'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.